Can I just give you a kiss, please? Sweetie, I just, I don't kiss on the first date. It's kiss time. It's time. I'm gonna get that for you. Thank you. Oh, I should totally give you a tour. Okay, perfect. Welcome to my room. So she liked him enough to go on a date with him. That's a very good sign. Uh, why are you inviting her to your basement right away? I mean, you're a virgin. Uh, why not do something like go get coffee in public? Something that's going to make the girl feel comfortable um, rather than something that is kind of inherently a little bit creepy. Like, let's go to my mother's basement. It's just, it's not an easy narrative for her to think, oh, that's sexy. That's that's what I want to do. I want to go to a guy's basement. That's just an uncomfortable situation that's going to kill the vibe even if she does like you. Um. Here's my poster of the Osmonds, and over here is my belly button lint collection. How many guys that you've gone on dates with in the last year still live at home? Next question. Creepy look in his eyes, right? Just a very creepy look he gave her that's not appealing. Long, awkward silence. Um, and then a really unaware question so how many guys like do they live at home uh it's just a weird thing to ask and it's like why bring that to the forefront i see the way in which he's trying to be charming but it's not working right like being self-effacing making fun of yourself it works when you're not genuinely insecure about the thing you're talking about so if i make a joke about being a virgin and i'm not a virgin it's likely to be funny but when you are a virgin and your whole identity is about being a virgin and you make a joke about being a virgin, it's creepy. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. It's like, ha, ha, ha. It's like when a fat guy makes fat jokes. You're like, ha, 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 ha. You don't know whether you're supposed to laugh or cringe or what. That's a huge mistake. Do you have your future kids' names picked out? Uh, no. I've had my future kids' names picked out since I was 14 talking about having children with her. That's what he's implying. That's the subtext. And that face, uh, you know, that says it all. It's like, what he's doing is using her. He's using her. He's treating her like, you're the object to get the family I need, the love I need, the sex I need. And he's not paying attention to her wants, her desires, her needs whatsoever. And because he's oblivious to those things she's like what the hell like what is this like it feels really weird it feels the way a celebrity feels when they're talking to like a super fan when they're talking to a super fan is like doesn't see you as a normal person it's just super super uncomfortable i don't want to go on a first date with a girl and have her think that i'm interviewing her to be my wife but it's always in <laughs> the butt says it all right in the back of my head so now what i've got um i've got a surprise don't go anywhere if you to be fair he is mormon and as mormons you're not supposed to have sex until marriage so it makes sense that he's thinking more about marriage but you don't go about it in this like contractual mechanical using her kind of way it should feel organic like we love each other and therefore we should get married. And that's something that you can get swept into, but when it feels like a business contract, it's very unappealing. I wanna kinda of clean this up or something like that, but I'll be right back now. Okay, I can do that. Surprise, can you come in? and uh, share your talents with us. Heavy hands on a short dance? ground. So Can we slow down? Questions. Sure. Run through my mind, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Can I be Big Spoon and you be Lil Spoon? I like a girl that's shorter than me. He's leading, which is good, but he's doing it in a way that creates a lot of pressure because he brought in this third person that she doesn't know that's serenading them. That's just so much pressure. And you don't want a girl to feel super uncomfortable uh, when you're moving things forward, obviously. I want to be able to put my arm around her and just kind of like sway at a concert. Like to me, that's great. And to me, that's cute. And whenever I see people doing that, I'm like, oh, I want to be them. Oh, <laughs> 
life I aspire to be a great big spoon. I want you by my side or in a spoon. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Woo! So if you want to start heading upstairs, there's like one last little surprise at the end of the night. Okay. I'll miss you. <laughs> Before I give you this, and before I walk you to the door, I really do think that I did pretty good on this date. If, maybe if I ask nicely. Never say you did pretty good. Can I please just give you a kiss? And sometimes you just are horny and you just want a kiss and you want like some rough stuff, but not Bishop, not talk to Bishop rough, but you want kind of like, ah. It doesn't have to be giant, but can, you can, can I give you? He's negotiating for a kiss. He's literally negotiating for a kiss. Again, it's, it's logic versus emotion. Romance, seduction, should be emotional. The more logical you make it, and a lot of guys do this, not as bad as he does it, but they're like, well, it's the end of the date. Now it's time to go for the kiss. It's kiss time. It's time. And, and that doesn't work because it feels forced it doesn't feel natural and so that turns women off this is just an example of that dialed to the extreme does that work can i just can i just give you a kiss please Sweetie, i just i don't kiss on the first date a guy wanting to kiss a girl shouldn't be a shock to a cute girl it should kind of be expected right That's all for tonight, Skippy. Okay, uh, let me know if you enjoyed this video, this breakdown of Skippy the Virgin. He's a very interesting case study uh, where he does have a certain assertiveness and confidence that works for him, but then the neediness just destroys everything. And this happens to a lot of guys. Not on the same level it happens to him, but it's happened to me, where initially there's attraction, initially things are going well, but then I get a little needy, I get a little too invested, I want her to like me too much, and then everything starts to go south, everything goes awry, and she feels that, and it's a repulsive feeling. This is the ultimate example of repulsive neediness, but even if you do it to a lesser extent, it's the same feeling, just not as intense. So this is something that you can learn a lot from because it's exactly what not to do. It's all the mistakes you might be making taken to the extreme. And when you see what they look like at the extreme, it becomes very clear why you don't want to be needy or pushy or to use a girl for your agenda without using empathy and compassion. Why all those things are so repellent to women. You see it, you understand it, and that will help you avoid making the same mistakes to a lesser degree in your own life. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. And if you want to learn how to actually pick up women, how to seduce women in a way that is not creepy, that does not make them uncomfortable, that is not repellent, that actually works, then make sure to click the link below to get my free hidden camera infield video of myself approaching a really hot girl and bringing her home. And me explaining the same way that I broke down this video and showing you why what Skippy did does not work, I break down what I do and explain why it did work, why I was able to bring that girl home. Make sure to click the link below to get instant access to that video.